Hello and welcome to Soccer 101. My name is Daryl Grove and on today's show I'll be explaining pressing. You probably hear the phrase pressing a lot when you're watching soccer, but maybe no one's ever laid out exactly what it is. So let's do that today and let's start with the absolute basics. Pressing is when the team that doesn't have the ball applies pressure to the team that does have the ball in an attempt to win it back or at the very least, to stop the team with the ball making any progress. Done correctly, pressing is like a Jedi mind trick because pressure from the defending team is a way of controlling where the ball is going even though it's the other team that actually has the ball. That's not the pass you're looking for, you can say, as you wave your hand. And it's not that the team in possession is weak-minded, like that dum dumb stormtrooper on Tatooine. It's more that if the press is coordinated correctly, then you can close off all kinds of passing options and leave the other team with no way to go about their business. So where do you press? Well, the most obvious and most fun to watch pressing happens really high up the field, and we literally call this the high press. It's not dissimilar, at least in my limited understanding, to a basketball full court press. It's just that there's a lot more space needs covering on a soccer pitch. To give you a visual of a high press, let's say the opposition centre-back has the ball. Maybe he's received it from his goalkeeper. He's at the top of his own penalty area. He's full of optimism about what he's going to do with the ball. Bless him. He's going to build an attack from back there. But then one of our strikers gets right in his face. And then our teammates are also up there, either marking other opponents and or standing in the way of potential passing lanes. Side note, a passing lane is literally the path the ball would travel if player A were to pass to player B. So if you stand in the way of this pass, then the passing lane is blocked. Got it? Okay, focus up again. Ideally, we're up there. And we outnumber them, at least in certain areas. And the idea is that that poor old centre-back, maybe picture him in a Stormtrooper helmet if it helps. He has so few options that he can't find a pass and he gets tackled. Or he can't find a good pass, so he makes a bad one and we pick it off. Or maybe if this centre-back is a safety first kind of guy, then he just says, forget it, this is impossible. And he just bangs the ball downfield where we collect, thank you very much. That was the pass we were looking for. Of course, there are different types of high press. Some teams will cut the field in half by denying passes to, say, the left side of the field, and then we'll focus on forcing the opposition toward the right, and then we'll outnumber them over there, even using the touchline to our advantage as an extra defender. Or some teams might decide that they have great tackling central midfielders, and they'll choose to direct the other team away from the sidelines and into the centre, where all our ball winners are waiting to do what they do best. Other teams might go with something more blockade-like, where we step high and block passing lanes, block passing options, but we don't actually chase you down for the ball. We just make it very, very hard for you to do anything useful, and we wait for you to accidentally pass the ball back to us. Of course, all this pressing is risky. The higher we step up the field, the more space we leave behind us. And really good teams can make that work for them. To switch metaphors, because it can't all be Alec Guinness based, pressing is like a giant net. And one mistake in our high pressing system is like a hole in the net. And if the opposition escapes, then we're in a lot of trouble because we had invested a lot into the idea that that net was going to hold. So another less gung-ho option is the midfield press, or as some people call it, the mid-block. This is where we step back to around midfield, let the opposition come forward a little and start the pressure a little ways over the halfway line. A midfield press or mid block usually relies on being compact and not allowing the opposition team any space to exploit between our lines and find forward passes. It's more of a frustration tactic than an in your face I'm taking that ball tactic. It's way less fun to watch, but it can work if done correctly. Speaking of things that work, if done correctly, today's show is sponsored by HIMSS, a hair loss solution for men. If your hairline is being forced backwards by an unseen enemy, then first know that that's not rare. It starts happening to 66% of men by around the age of 35. I guess time applies the great high press to all our hairlines. So 
If it's happening to you, then you're very much not alone. And if you want to do something about it, then Hims offers FDA-approved products prescribed by licensed physicians. With Hims, you connect with a doctor online, it's all completely confidential and discreet, and answer a few easy questions. If the doctor determines Hims is right for you, they can then prescribe you medication to treat hair loss that is shipped directly to your door. Soccer 101 listeners can get started with their first month free. Go to 4 slash total soccer. That's 4 slash total soccer. Here's the disclaimer. Prescription requires an online consultation with a physician who will determine if a prescription is appropriate. Offer valid only if prescribed. Three month minimum subscription. Additional restrictions apply. See website for full details and important safety information. One more time. That's 4 dot com slash total soccer and thank you to hims for sponsoring today's soccer 101 all right some pressing details how do teams know when to press well most will have pressing triggers basically a thing that signals the whole team that now is the time to all step up together it could be as simple as the farthest forward player say the striker making the first move and then we all follow him he decides because he looked pretty silly pressing on his own, so we may as well help him. Or it could be when the opposition player in possession takes a bad touch and is momentarily weak, so we all pounce. Or it could be that the opposition team plays the ball backwards because their momentum is in our favour, so now we press. It could be any of the above, and I'm sure there are plenty more that I don't know about. could even be that one of their players just plain old isn't that good with the ball so we press as soon as that player receives possession and we press so hard that after full time he's thinking about alternative career paths law school maybe but i know what you're thinking this guy's been talking for like five minutes and he hasn't even mentioned gagan pressing yet don't worry i saved it for last let's do it gagan pressing is a german phrase that translates roughly as counter pressing but and here's the crucial part Gagan pressing or counter pressing does not mean countering a press. See, in German, the verb goes at the end of the phrase. So to gegen press, to counter press, means to press the counter, to press against the counter attack. So what it really means is that when we're attacking and we lose possession, the other team is going to try and counter attack us. And this is when we press, to win it back before they can get their attack started. With the added advantage that when we win it back, they won't be in a good defensive shape. They'll be there for the taking, as exposed and unprotected as the planet Alderaan. So next time you watch a game, have a think about pressing. How high up the field is the defending team willing to go? Is the defending team directly pressuring the man on the ball or just blocking his passing lanes, or a combination of both. Better yet, hit pause and look around and see if you can spot which passing lanes are blocked, which off-the-ball players are man-marked, and by whom. And when one team's attack breaks down, do they gag and press? I hope this brief explanation of pressing has been helpful. If you enjoyed this show, please subscribe to Soccer 101 and give some of our other episodes a try. Some are just me, some are just Taylor... Some are both of us together, but so far, only this one includes an annoying number of Star Wars references. I've been Daryl Grove, and may the press be with you. Hold up. 